Hi, my name is Dr. Camille Gaines, and I have recently been elected as the board chair of BIMS, and this is BIMS Hall. I will be here for the next hour answering any questions you have about my role with BIMS, how I got involved with BIMS, my regular job, how I got interested in marine science. Really nothing is off limits. So please, 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 you can utilize the chat, the YouTube chat and ask any questions. I will get them and I will answer them as they come in. I am coming to you live from Maine and I just wanna talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. I'm a part of a camp specifically for educators and we're talking about ways and going through different um, activities that they can then take into their classrooms. Of course here I'm what? All about the ocean, right? So we've been focusing on oceanic things. Yesterday we were fortunate enough to go in, um, in the intertidal zone and look at some algae. Those of you who know me know that I personally studied tropical algal systems. And so it's really cool when I get to go to a new place, especially a system like this is water's colder, much colder, right? And you can see different types of algae. It really shows me the diverse or um, group of algae, right? It's like going from a desert almost to a rainforest. You just see so many different types of organisms and they look so different. So with that, um, I'll give it a moment. You guys might have some time, get some questions going. I also see Maddie is here. She might come through um, and answer any questions you have. And maybe Maddie, you can come and you can uh, introduce yourself as well um, in terms of what you do. Hi, great to meet you, Camille, over Zoom. Um, I'm in second year at the University of California, Santa Cruz. And I am currently in Morea, French Polynesia, with the Diversity Project, I'm doing really great research. I know, Camille, you're an alum of it. I've heard so many things about you and Dr. Moore as well. Um, so yeah, right now, we actually today, this morning, I was in the field doing a herbivory bioassay at a couple different sites. Yeah, I'm really interested in marine mammals, marine mammal behavior, communication, and also, I'm interested in kelp forest ecosystems and the intertidal. So this is kind of like a new area of the world for me, but, you know, I'm having a lot of fun and learning a bunch. So, yeah, thank you for having me, Camille. Of course. Maddie, you actually said a lot right there. And so maybe we can break a little bit of that down and start off. What is an herbivore assay or an herbivore? So, so there are herbivorous fish in the tropics. We're just kind of focusing on six general species, some parrotfish and some surgeon fish. Um, so we put out podina, which is a type of brown calcifying algae that's really palatable to these fish. And we put it out for five of our sites and we put it out there around 9 a.m. and we're gonna go collect it in a couple of hours to see how much of the algae has been eaten. So we weighed each individual piece in the beginning and then we're gonna weigh it at the end, and then we do some math to see the food of consumption and percent. And can you tell us a little bit more about the project you're working on? Why are you interested in how much fish algae is, how much algae fish is eating? So our general project is we have an experiment that's been out in the field for about 11 days and we are specifically studying halibita, which is a green calcifying algae. And we are looking at if you take away herbivory or look at different textures of herbivory, how does that change the rate of calcification in halibita? So we have three different types of treatments in cages. So we have one that's ambient normal, regular herbivorous pressures, and we have a completely closed cage. So there's no herbivory. And then we have the last cage, which we go in, my team goes in every other day to kind of cut that alameda to simulate herbivory. So that's three different treatments, and we're going to take it out in about seven yeah. days and then run some great to see which alameda are more calcified than others, you know, it's a different rates and how herbivorous pressures That's super cool. That's super cool. Maybe you can also tell us, I'm sorry, I'm asking you a lot of questions of, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the reef systems in Morea. 
right? Like, are they super close to the shore? Like, are there a lot of corals at the site that you're working at? Are there not? Like, what does it kind of look like? Kind of give us a feel. You're muted, Maddie, you're muted. Sorry about that. Um, so we have five different sites. The site that our experiment is at is a recovering reef. So it has a lot of recovery, um, a lot of really pretty reefs. It looks really good. Um, and from everyone else who's like been here and seen it like come back over the years, they said it's like one of the healthiest reef ecosystems on Maria. Um, we have a couple other sites. We have one that's a really big sand flat. So there's not really, it's about five feet, six feet at the deepest. Um, there's a pretty heavy reef and then it kind of stops and you just get some bombing. Um, so it's not really super consistent. So that's on the lower end of the herbivory scale. Um, and then we have a really big site that's kind of split into two because there's a west and an east side that are both really different. So one side has a lot less herbivory than the other side because it's on a public beach where the other side has higher herbivory pressures because it's on a more private beach. So like not everybody can go there. Um, so yeah, just kind of seeing how all of these reef ecosystems are different. Um, and they're all mostly fringing reefs, so right on the shore. Um, and then a lot of them kind of go out. These are volcanic islands, so you know, you get a really big drop off at a certain point where, you know, you just get a lot of different types of fishes. That's cool, that's cool. Also, so you are in Marea, right? And it's so interesting, yes. I'm in Maine, we're in totally different time yeah. zones, right? So here mm -hmm. it is five o'clock for me. What time is it there in Marea? It's 11 a.m. I've been up since 6.30, so it's been a pretty long day so, so far. Wow. Did you guys do some diving this morning? Yeah, so we were we actually on snorkel, and oh. my team. I have I'm in a team of four people, so we split up to go to our different sites and put our herbivory assay out. But normally, when we're simulating our herbivory every other day, we're on scuba, and you know we've done a lot of other stuff on scuba. Mm. Yeah, super cool. That's super cool. I'm been back seriously through you the water here in Maine is definitely not as warm <laughs> as yeah. what in Maria. um and I'm sorry I'm so fidgety but the uh, bugs have been getting me so I have a oh lot God. of bugs. I'm sure you can relate to the mosquitoes yeah. <laughs> yep. so so Maddie um I heard that you are half or going on or have been on an ocean X excursion did I get that right yeah. Yeah, so I was actually part of their first inaugural Young Explorers program last summer. Oh, um, how was it? How was it? I, it was amazing. I cannot talk enough about Ocean X. That was like, that was the experience that like got me into marine science that like kind of, i would always been interested in marine science ever since I was really little. I just you know, thought the ocean was really cool, but I never knew like that that was like a tangible career. Like I never knew that I could be a marine biologist so I kind of just was really into human biology and I just I knew I was always going to be a scientist but I just kind of gave up on the marine science because I never thought it would be a reality and then I went on the young explorers program and I actually saw like real marine scientists and also I met a bunch of black women marine scientists and I was like oh like this is something I can do and so yeah ever since then it's just been like so many people and yeah, the Young Explorers program is amazing. Is I asked because I'm actually going to be going on a Young Explorers excursion as well. I heard that, yes. I'm so excited for you. I am jealous. I would kill to be back on the ocean explorer. Uh, where did your excursion, like, what was the route? Yeah, so we flew from the U.S. and then we had a layover in Amsterdam and then we had a layover in Lisbon, Portugal. Okay. And then we flew from Lisbon to the Azores. To where? And the Azores, the island off the coast of Portugal. Okay. I have never yeah. heard of that before. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we flew to the Azores and we quarantined for like five days. And then our route was from the Azores up to Bergen, Norway. So we kind of went through. So we saw Scotland. We saw Ireland. We saw Isle of Man. We kind of went through the North Sea. So we were kind of like sailing around like the United Kingdom and then up all the way. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
it was amazing. It was, I had never been in that area of the world before. Mm. Um, like I had never been to like Norway or Portugal or anything like that. And so that was just like amazing to me. Just like, we didn't see land for like nine days and it was amazing. Like it was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm, I'm slightly nervous. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm slightly nervous mm-hmm. about it, but I am excited about um, just being on a boat like that. Typically, a lot of my research, you know, I just, Maria, right? Roll right. along. If I'm on a boat, it's like maybe 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, so being on a boat for days and seeing, not seeing land, it's going to be a completely different experience for me, even as a marine scientist, um, which yeah. I'm super excited about. Um, and also same, same thing here. We're going to be um, going from Egypt and that's going to be our starting point. So and cool. I've never been, this is going to be the first time I've been. So jealous. I'm, I'm excited. So this is the first time that I'm going to be on the African continent. So it'll be very interesting. Very interesting. So, hey, if you're just starting to join us, just want to reintroduce ourselves. This is the Black and Marine Science BIMS Town Hall. You can ask us any questions. My name is Dr. Camille Gaines. I am the chair of the board for the organization. We recently just got our 501c3 as a nonprofit. So on the leadership time side, we're pretty hype about that. And I'm here with Maddie Stewart. She is um, currently in Marea doing some research with the Diversity Project. And we're here to just answer any questions you may have about being a marine scientist, um, what we do in terms of research, how we got involved, any other things we've done, um, some of the challenges maybe, if you're interested in getting involved, ways that you can do that, um, some of the upcoming things we have going on, really nothing is off limits. So just ping us, use the YouTube chat to have to um, post any questions you have. You can go from there. So Maddie, going back to your Ocean X, uh, you know, we were here. How did you even find out about the program? So it was, it was really interesting at first because it was kind of all word of mouth um, because they didn't, like it was their first year, so they were just trying to get, you know, people and their connection to they knew. And so my mom actually had posted about me on Facebook, like where I was going to college and like what I was interested in. And somebody who was like her friend on Facebook worked at Ocean X and like knew the Young Sport program was happening. So she reached out to us and like, Hey, would Matt be down to do this? And I was like, of course, like I'm not gonna pass this up. And at that point, it was like June 2021. I wasn't a marine bio major at that point. I was like human bio and anthropology. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, I have never taken a marine science class. I just graduated high school. So I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is a lot, but you know, I just want to dive right into it. And in the application, I had interviews with like and the Carabone and then, like the Ocean X kind of a team and yeah and it all just happened and I think it was like 10 days into the trip I like changed my major to marine bio and I was like okay yeah that's what I'm doing so that's kind of how it started but now they have like a whole application process it's great I love it it's interesting because that's kind of how I started my first time when I was a participant at the diversity project. Um, professor like just kind of cornered me in the hallway and was like, hey, Camille, would you like to do this? And I was like, yeah, go to school diving. Why not? Um, and things just kind of went from there. So it's interesting how connections like that um, can really change the tra- educational tra- trajectory. And we actually have a question from Eli Bundy. They ask, what's the best way to find projects that involve lots of time on a boat? I have always wanted to do research from offshore. Well, Eli, first and foremost, you can always become a member of BIMS if you're not already. We have tons of opportunities that we have on our members section. Um, And they range from all different types of things, from speaking engagements to internships to jobs. Um, Those, that's also a resource for you. 
also like Maddie and I are talking about, just talking with folks. Um, I think if you find an organization and they're doing things that really excite you, reach out to them. I mean, my philosophy on it is it's their job to tell me no. <laughs> so until they do, um, I'm going to at least pursue it. And you will be surprised at how many times people say yes, actually, you know. Um, I think that places like NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, they do a lot of like oceanography um, type research where they're looking at patterns over large parcels of land or, or large parcels of, of sea, I'm sorry. And so they use huge research vessels and they go out, way out. They're looking at maybe oxygen demand, pH, salinity, temperature. Um, Ocean X, of course, this excursion, like Maddie said, she, on her excursion, there were nine days where she couldn't even see land. I'm assuming there's going to be a very similar situation with um, the excursion that I'm going to go on, where there's going to be times where it's just the boat in the ocean, <laughs> um, and I'm not going to be able to see land like that. So there are organizations that kind of do that type of um, research. And so look at when they have... Um, specific excursions, maybe even trying to meet with someone on that team. Again, I'm going to plug, again, the Black and Marine Science team, because uh, we do have tons of, like, connections, right? And, um, heck, you have two people right here who have done that type or will be doing that type of work. Maddie, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that. So, at least now, still in undergrad, I know there's a lot of programs in for undergrad, who and oh, I'm thinking of the year before college. Oh, okay. Yeah. So for undergrad, there's this, or there's this kind of, it's not an organization, but there's an opportunity called STEM Seas, which allows underrepresented groups in marine science to go aboard an SF funded research vessel. Um, and so that's kind of something similar. I, there's actually still on my CDP doing it for UCCPA. Um, excuse me. Hey, Maddie, Sorry. um, you're going out a little bit. Um, so maybe just speak just a little bit slower. I know the connection, um, in Ray yeah. can be spotty, um, but we definitely sure we're getting the information that you're saying and I feel like you said a lot so maybe if you could just repeat that yeah. um, so Eli can get the information. Yeah I was just talking about STEM studies which is a for marine scientists come from the representative group um, and you get to go for NSF funded research vessels for six to ten days. Um, yeah so that's kind of the opportunity that you um, also, through BIMS and OceanX are more kind of opportunities that you can look into for onboard research vessel work. Okay, yeah, we got some of that. Um, hopefully, Eli, you can also reach out to us and we can email and like talk offline about things that um, are specific to what you um, would like to do. You are in a great space right now because you're finished finished up high school, right? You're looking for college and college, I think is what you make it. And so there are gonna be a ton of opportunities that you're going to have access to. And I think that if you already know things that excite you, that will help you to not get overwhelmed, right? And kind of hone in and focus on those things that really excite you. And that will help also those folks who may want to mentor you or you want to get advice from to help to funnel certain activities and certain experiences your way. When I was an undergrad, professors kind of knew that I was interested and excited about research. And so that was one of the reasons why I was able to get so many different types of internship opportunities because they would say, oh, hey, Camille, we just saw this. You should apply. Hey, there's a scholarship that comes with a research opportunity. You should apply for this as well. And so once you get into school, I think that would be a really good way to approach it. Even beforehand, if you know what your major is going to be, maybe reaching out to that department, seeing what type of opportunities they have. Um, a lot of times universities have um, places or like, uh, like 
center with internships, but I just personally, from my experience, I found it better to talk with professors and they really were the ones who helped me to get the opportunities. And so Maddie, how long have you been in Maria? So oh, we have been here since June 12th. And we yeah, have just a little bit over a month and we leave on July 31st. So we're here for, we're here for a minute. Yes, 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 yes. That's usually how it goes, you know. And Eli, if you are going on a ship, you'll probably be on, especially way offshore, you will be there for a minute as well um you think it's a long time but the time moves it like it, it moves slow but then it moves fast because then you're like oh man like I have so much to do like and I thought I had so much time but then like it, it moves quick it moves quick Maddie, we I, I I got a little bit of what you had to say. I didn't get it all. No, I was just saying like we've been here for so like we've been here for so long, but then we leave in like two weeks, which is you know oh. really quick. So that's just kind of crazy. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah. So Eli just asked if we would mind typing the organ or if Maddie would mind typing out the name of the organization that um, helps support for underrepresented students on research vessels. And she did. So hopefully we will get that information on the YouTube um, chat as well. And so other folks can see that, you know, that's one of the things, right? Especially being a scientist of color, we got to make sure that other scientists of color know what different opportunities they have. Um, where they can go for these things. You know, we don't need to be closed mouthed about the opportunities because there are a lot. And so one of the things that like I've asked a lot and I'll just like put this out there is about the community outreach that BIMS may do, right? And we do a lot. And so I just wanna talk a little bit about just some of the things we've done recently. Um, first and foremost, we were at Essence Fest, right? It's like the Mecca for black women. I unfortunately was not on the team that went, but hopefully in the future, my schedule will allow me to go. Um, and just making sure that our community, right, knows that we even exist. We're here, when we think of marine scientists, we don't think of folks who look like the people on this call, right? We don't think of black people and black women. Um, and that's a big th part of our mission, um, making sure that people know that we exist, but also that they have the opportunities to interact with their coastal ecosystems, their oceans, right? And so we do a lot of that. We do a lot of I myself going and doing presentations, talking to students, in particular younger students, as well as the collegiate students that I work with, telling them about the ocean, what I do. I study coral reefs and I live in the Philadelphia region. So sometimes it's like, Camille, why, why does that matter in my life? And so making sure that I can link that right and tell them, hey, these are the reasons why it's important we understand this specific community, but also encouraging them to get to know communities, coastal communities that are closer to them too, starting to bridge that gap. Because a lot of times, right, what we as Black people haven't had the opportunities to really interact with these ecosystems, and that has to change. And I think that when it comes to our community outreach, that's a huge goal of BIMS, making sure that we're starting to get more opportunities for folks to interact with the ocean, right? So we had our BIP program, our immersion program where we had seven people go and get scuba certified earlier this summer, right? Making sure not only that they are getting comfortable, but they have a tool that they can utilize to really explore 
their coastal systems in the ocean. Something that Maddie is familiar with too, right? She's probably gotten two certifications and is able to dive on a research station and conduct the research that she does. Again, just another skill, another set, a set of tools that she has in her tool belt that really helps you to really explore these ecosystems. But that doesn't happen often for us. So making sure that we have those opportunities for our community is integral and very important. Hopefully, come BIMS week three, Maddie will be doing some type of activity or you know have some type of panel that she's on where she can discuss, right? And that's another big thing that BIMS does. We have our Black and Marine Science Weeks where we talk about these things. We have a ton of different activities um, about all different aspects of the ocean. We have people like myself who are researchers, but we have folks who write books, right? Who are authors and illustrators and they talk about their relationship with the ocean. You don't just have to be somebody like me to enjoy the ocean, to understand it. Heck, there's times I get more information from non-academics about the ocean um, and that really helps me as well. I think one of the other things we do, of course, is things like this, right? We're outreach, we're talking with folks. We put this live on our YouTube channel so that people have this information and they can watch it and they can look and see, but also they have the opportunity to ask us questions, right? Anything about our experiences, about our, um, our, our trajectories, our past, where we are, and the ocean in general. The ocean is a vast place. I feel like I'm always going to be learning about the ocean. And so when people talk about outreach, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm still outreach. I'm still learning too myself um, and getting new opportunities. So, Maddie, what has been the best part of Maria? So much has happened. I think, we, I think we got to dive off the quarry. That was the best part. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Uh, did you say you, diving off the quarry? Yes. Oh, yes. That, that was amazing because we got to go down 80, 90 feet, which, you know, before then, we all got, we're all now we certified at 30 feet. So our DSO, like, don't go below 30 feet, you know, the rule that's not hard to stop. Um, but he took us down to like 85 feet and that was just incredible. It was just, it was so beautiful. Like there was so much coral coverage. There was just, it was just insane. And it was so quiet and so calm too. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. That was just, I felt like I really put my life into perspective. Like, small we all are yeah oh man the four reef so just maddie talked about she's doing her research and her project maria is shaped like a w um, and it has two bays and the fringing reef is that reef closest to the shore so like if you think about the w right these are the two bays that fringing reef kind of outlines the w part right the four reef is a little bit deeper and a little bit further offshore. Those reefs are deeper, like she said, she was able to go down much deeper and they have more coral cover. And there's larger fish, that's where you'll see a lot more sharks. There are a lot of sharks. And I don't know, Maddie, if you saw sharks on your dive in the four reef, um, but you can see sharks in Marea and French Polynesia. They um, have some pretty good um, policies that protect them. And so they haven't been under overfished like in a lot of other reef communities. And that four reef is where you, I, in my opinion, you see the most diversity in terms of corals and um, invertebrates like little crabs and shrimps. Um, I like to, you know, when you're diving, I get excited about stuff, but sometimes even just staying in one place and just looking in all the crevices and cracks, um, you start to get a more a feel for the diversity um, that you're coming across. So yeah, the four reef is a great place. I, side note, I've had many experiences on the four reef, some not so good. <laughs> and I'll talk about some of those, but one in particular where there was just like a turtle just kind of hanging out and just like getting yeah. seeing what we're doing and that stuff like that is always amazing. Um, always amazing 
I'm sure, I don't know if um, Paul Barber is there, but he and his camera always clicking away. <laughs> yeah, so many pictures, so many pictures of us. But when we went to the forest, we didn't see like sharks or anything. It's kind of sad, but we got to go to, it's called the Motus, which is like, it's really, yeah, it's kind of like a touristy place. And it's like a big sand flat where a bunch of like, you know, people who come and stay like it's open, they all go out there and see a bunch of sharks and rays around there. And so um, mm-hmm. Paul took us the, there and it was amazing. We were snorkeling these black fish sharks and we caught these rays and huge Kowali fish. It was just amazing like to be able to like, you know, be so close to these animals. Um, but there's been like, there's been so many times, even today, this morning, for dive, um, we saw a spot of spotted eagle red, like as soon as we got through the water. And that was just like incredible. Like there's been so many times where we just you know been out turtles, rays, like some really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. I you can dive the same place and see something different each time. Every day. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's just, it, that's like one of my favorite things about the ocean. It's like, folks, this frozen on my end. I'm sorry, can you guys, am I back? I think that I was a little frozen there. You were frozen on my end for a little bit, but, um, just going back to the dynamics of the ocean and how like we think it's so stagnant sometimes, but it's not, right? And going to the same place, you know, checking up on an experiment and you see different things happening. You see different organisms, um, some that you might not have even seen before. Um, it's amazing. It's great. It's great. So Maddie, I want to ask you some questions. I know I'm asking you a lot of questions and if you have questions for me, um, but just while we're waiting for any other questions that folks who are tuning in might have, um, I'm curious if you know what year, you know, you're still an undergrad, just you're about to start your sophomore or junior year? Sophomore year. Okay. So what do you have plans as to what you would like to do um, after this? Do you foresee yourself going into research? Continue yeah. This yeah, I definitely am going to stick to marine science. It's I've always been passionate about it and now I know I can actually do it. And I've made so many connections, even through PDP, through through all these like amazing organizations. Um yeah, so I know, I think after undergrad, I'm going to go get my PhD. Don't know where yet. I have a lot of time. Um, yeah, I want to do more research with green examples because that's something I know that I'm really interested in, um, especially behavior, communication, and disease. Um, so I really kind of want to explore more research in that area. I mean, that's a lot further. I think when I was around, like going into my uh, sophomore, even my junior year, I kind of had an idea that I wanted to get a graduate degree, but I thought at the time that I would just like get a master's, um, maybe work for a bit, I don't know, um, and kind of, you know, maybe get a PhD for that. I had a very, I just thought that's the path you took to begin mm-hmm. to get a PhD, right? I just assumed that's what the folks who came before me did. Um, and I, it was through the diversity project that I realized the diverse ways that people actually get PhDs, right? There's no one yeah. set way. And so that kind of made me think, oh, well, you know, make it mine, you know, take advantage right. of the opportunities. So I think that's, that's great. That's great. We need more people like you. Um, we need more people who are interested in the ocean. It's a huge place. I always say the problems and the conservation efforts, um, best team. We need the best team, and diversity is a part of that best team. Um, I want to ask you, like, 
how did your, I guess, how did you like know that you wanted to be a marine scientist? What did you, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Like, how did you know you wanted to be a marine scientist? How did you get exposed to the field? Like, how did you just get where you are? Oh, okay. That's a big, big question, but like, yeah. No, we got time, but it isn't something I love to talk about. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Philadelphia. Um, I've always loved the water where I went to preschool. Um, I, they offered swim lessons. So I established a comfort and just a love for the water early. And I realized that I just physically liked being in the water. Like it was something about being submerged. It was something about that that just was calming and cool to me. And of course, I didn't know at the time about being a marine scientist or anything like that. Um, My mom on that side of the family, she was the first to go to college. And on top of that, she went to law school as well. So I just say education was important to her. But I also grew up in a household where it was like, oh, you like science, then you'll be a medical doctor or you'll be a nurse. That's just kind of the path I thought I had to choose from. Um, there were a couple of things that happened that kind of told me otherwise. One of the first ones is when I was in high school, I had the opportunity to work in a lab at the University of Penn and through a program called True Team Research and Education in Environmental Science actually still around today. So any high school students who are interested in environmental or marine science, I would highly encourage you to check that program out. It happens in the summer. And that was the first time that I actually met people who enjoyed science, but were doing things like working for the EPA, which I didn't even know was a thing, like in organizations like NOAA or folks who were researchers and meeting graduate students. And so that kind of changed how I went about looking for colleges because I was like, oh, wow, like I can still do science and like do something, studying a natural system, being in nature. I still hadn't put the pieces together that it would be marine science for me, even though at the time I loved going to the ocean. I was a competitive swimmer. You know, I still had that water vibe, but it was really when I was at Hampton University that's where my undergrad degree is from, that I was like, yes, marine science, this is it for me. Um, I was still a little bit confused about my path, um, but I was fortunate enough to have internships every summer that I was there, paid internships, paid internships, paid is the key word, um, because that really also showed like my mom, especially like, oh, okay, there's something to this, right? Um, I was able to get a NOAA scholarship, which really helped with um, my tuition. And that's a reason, one of the reasons I didn't graduate with a whole bunch of debt. Um, and it was really the diversity project, though, that was like kind of nail in the coffin. Like I said, it dismissed a lot of the kind of thoughts I had around graduate degrees and the process. And that was really the program where it was like, OK, nail in the coffin. I'm going to apply for PhD programs and let's do it. And I'm going to be honest, I applied for PhD programs and I didn't know at the time if I wanted to go into academia like that, but I did know I didn't want any ceiling on me. I wanted to go into a space. I wanted to be one of the researchers who was helping to formulate the questions, right? How are we going to do this? I wanted to be on that level. I didn't just want to be having someone tell me what to do. Um, And that was also one of the reasons I was like, I'm going to get the PhD now. Um, because it's like I'm young also it's like why not Um, again going back to what I said earlier it was their job to tell me Um, and so I applied and as you know I went to UCLA um, and I did my PhD there Um, from there I had a postdocs and now here I am I work at Penn State Brandywine in the biology department I'm also heavily involved in black and marine science which is an organization that I love. Um, I can see this is like just the beginning of the organization. And there are times, you know, especially I've navigated spaces where I'm the only person of color and that can be very challenging. And I think that that is one of the reasons why a lot of people of color leave STEM, leave science, um, not because they can't do the work or they're not enjoy it, but just because they're tired of some of the social dynamics that they have to navigate. 
Um, and I get it, but I think that's why organizations like Black and Marine Science are so important. And even when I'm doing my research and we're talking about this, we're writing grants, we've applied for, it's like just the energy and the vibes that I get are so different and it makes me wanna work harder. Um, it, I bring my best self forward. Um, and so that's just kind of a very long overhaul of like where I've come as a Marine, how I got interested in like where I am now. Um, I think the opportunities, there's so many out there um heck i'm in maine right like i've never seen some of the species of algae which is really what i study that i've i've seen them in books but this is my first time actually experiencing them live on in person and so experiences like that for me are like extremely great i'm grateful for and i want to continue to have those type of experiences as a marine scientist like i said i mean the ocean is huge I'm, I feel like I'm gonna be an old lady and there's gonna be like something, have you heard of this? And it's like, no, like, cause it's always gonna be changing. There's always gonna be some new things happening. I'm sure even the re how the stuff that's going on in Maria now, and I'm interested and I will be tuning into y'all symposium via Zoom. Um, but yes, I'm interested in seeing what you guys have going, the projects, um, your thoughts, your um, research, your ideas and the trends you're seeing because that's, that's what excites me as a marine scientist. And it's exciting even more when it's coming from a community that looks like me, um, which, is, which is great, which is great. Yeah, no, I definitely understand what you're saying. I feel like I think it's easier for me to come in. I feel like I'm more receptive if I talk to scientists who look like me. Um, I missed some of that. Um, would you just mind repeating some of that, Maddie? Yeah. Um, can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. okay. I was just saying, like, I feel like I'm more receptive, and I feel like I understand better. Like, I just feel like it's more of like welcoming and. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I my philosophy is I. The low numbers, the that we see not just in academia for scientists of color, but on the policy side, supervisor, any type of ocean conservation. It's not because people of color are not interested or they're not, um, they can't do the work, but it's simply because of exclusion. And so we have to start to break those trends, right? And programs that are doing that, programs that kind of actively work, you know, actively put the actions in to make sure they're not perpetuating that they're vital, they're vital. Even I look at the diversity project, right? You see so many of the alum, I'm sure you myself, but there are tons of other ones who have gone to graduate school, have graduated or are in graduate school, right? Not just at, in the UCs, but other schools across the country. And it's, it's a network. It's a network that also helps, you know, you have a community. We all need a community to help support us. So yeah, I'm excited, Maddie, to see what y'all have done. I'm excited to um, hear y'all's stories, to see what things have happened in Maria. Also on a side note, um, was Ashlyn Ford out there while you were there? Oh, okay. She's a graduate student at UCLA. You will meet her. Side note, she and I used to be roommates. She's a graduate student of Peggy's. Um, she's, yeah, I can give her a shout out. She's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. I think I might have, I think I might have heard her name, mm -hmm. but I don't think she's actually here right now. Okay. Yeah, well, this is exciting. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, if you have any other, Maddie, do you have any other questions or anything you would like to let folks know before we um, end the stream? Uh, we, we couldn't really hear you there. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think we talked about ocean. So, hi, Eli. Elijah, shout um, out to me. Yes, <laughs> what I, mean. <laughs> I don't know where he is right now. He's somewhere on Gump right now. But yeah, 
So, you know, we talked about CEP, we talked about Ocean X, and that's it. Yes, yes. That also, if you haven't, get your BIMS membership, right? Dr. Moore, and I've stolen this quote from her. She knows it, but I'm going to shout her out every time I use it. Either you ride in the wave or you're getting washed up. And so ride the wave with us. We're riding it strong. We got a whole team. We got our gear situated. Um, and yeah, it was great talking with you all. Great, of course, talking with you, Maddie. I'm super excited. I may ping you um, as I'm on the ocean excursion or maybe even at before um, as I'm getting stuff situated. Um, all right, you guys have a great rest of your week from the BIMS team to, to from me to you. Um, become a member and we'll see you all later.